At its core, Jobs Be Done is a framework to help you understand why and how people buy the products they do. We have found that if you understand the Jobs Be Done, you greatly increase your chances of connecting your product with the right buyer at the right time. I'll explain what I mean through this really quick story. Meet John. He's a product developer and he's ready to build the next great thing. This isn't his first launch though. He's had a few before, but it didn't go so well. The first time, he relied strictly on personas. His company told him that they needed to sell to more women, specifically women within a certain age range and a certain income bracket. He knew exactly what to do. This was a disaster. Simply knowing who you want to sell to doesn't tell you how to develop your product for them or what they need to hear to understand how this product would help them. The second time, he decided to start with his engineering team. They had long, in-depth meetings to discuss all the great ways they could improve the product. It took a lot longer to build it, and it would cost a lot more money, but man, it had some of the most amazing features you would ever want to see. When they took the product to market, again, they were met with disappointment. Some customers took a look at all the new stuff, and they were instantly turned off. For those that did try it, it took them forever to learn how to use it, and most of them quit using it after a while. But John was determined to win. So he finally decided to just ask the customers simply, what would you want to see in our next launch? John's customers were great. They had a ton of ideas for him, and he listened carefully as each customer told them everything they should do, everything from the new colors they should add into it to how it should act on social media to what size it should be. He took the list back to the development team, and they warned John, we can build it, but it's going to be expensive and take a long time to build. But John would hear none of it. The customer had spoken. How could they possibly go wrong? Months and months later, John took the product back to the market. But again, no one bought it. John became depressed. He loved building products, but he felt like he was just chasing his tail. Could anyone tell him how to build this thing? Not long after, John was driving home when his phone rang. It was his wife. She wanted him to grab pizza on the way home. His son's soccer team had won the big game, and boy, were they hungry. She asked him to stop by the pizza shop and grab five pizzas quick. On the way, he notices a pizzeria he and his wife went for their anniversary. It was a beautiful place with candlelight and very good pizza. He remembered how nice and quiet that evening was. They sat there for hours. He finally makes it to the pizza shop, and they have pizzas ready to go, quick and cheap. He grabs five, and he's back in his car in a matter of minutes. He gets home, and the kids are having a blast, running and yelling. They instantly devour all the pizza he bought. But luckily, he kept a box for his wife and himself. As John thought about the two different times he had bought pizza, one with his wife on their anniversary and one for the kids, it became clear to him that he didn't buy the pizza based on any of his demographics. He didn't buy the pizza based on the features and benefits that came with pizza. What he actually did, and actually what we all do, is we hire products because we have a job that we need done. And so John recognized that he had two jobs to be done. In job number one, Help me feed my kids as fast as possible. It was perfect for the pizza shop. But he could have chosen hot dogs or hamburgers or any other type of fast food. Now for job number two, help me celebrate a special occasion with my wife. Well, that was perfect for the restaurant. But he could have chosen a romantic movie or maybe they could have took a nice walk together. But at no point did the pizza shop and the restaurant ever compete for the same job. But how could he use this to help his product? He did some research and found jobsbedone.org. There he learned techniques and frameworks that helped him see things differently. John went back to some of his best customers, and instead of asking what they wanted, he asked, what were they doing the last time they bought a product like this? He was shocked to find out that people were using his product to get a lot of jobs done that he had never thought of. Now that John knew the jobs that his customers were trying to get done, he knew what to include in his next launch, and more importantly, he knew what to keep out. He knew what his marketing should say, using his customers' words, not just his own. He also thought of new places and ways to sell his product that were more convenient to not only his current customers, but to other customers that might be trying to get the same job done. It turns out that once John realized the different jobs his customers were hiring his product for, building, marketing, and selling his product successfully was much easier.